this is Tim Jackson, and I am very happy to have with me uh, Grantley Phillips, who is formerly of the band uh, Grantley Buffalo. He's got an album just about to come out, and this is his 10th solo album. Uh, and some of you may actually know him or remember him as the town troubadour in Gilmore Girls. Uh, yep. He was also once upon a time, <laughs> can't remember when, named uh, Male Vocalist of the Year by Rolling Stone. So uh, a lot of accolades, a very good songwriter and multi-instrumentalist, Grantley Phillips. Welcome to the show. I'm good. How you doing? Good, good. <laughs> it's definitely uh, good to, to speak to you again. Um, I'm excited to talk a little bit about this new album that you've got. Uh, it's just about to be released. It's coming out in early September. But all along, uh, in, in recent months, you've been releasing singles. And I know you've got uh, your fourth one just out now, which is Morning Dove. But uh, tell me just a little bit about the first three. You had Lowest Low first and then Straight to the Ground and then Gather Up, which Gather Up also has a great video that goes with it, um, an illustrated, right. animated video. So kind of what's the reception been and, and how has that process been uh, releasing these singles? So that's 40% of your, of your album has, has now been released in singles. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, that's right. Um, the reception has been good. Uh, Rolling Stone um, called it an ode to peace. I like that. I'll take that. <laughs> it is a peaceful song. Yeah, I think we could all use a little bit of that. Um, I'd like to think that there's a side uh, to this album that um, I mean it doesn't really skirt some of the uh, uh, <laughs> some of the harder parts of living uh, that we're accustomed to. But I, I like to think that it might add a little bit of comfort as well. You know. Um, certainly in a song like Morning Dove, which is, which is a, uh, it's a song that I wrote, uh, began writing soon after I moved here, about 2013. So that's a long time for me because I can go to the car wash, come home with burritos, not from the car wash, obviously, but. <laughs> that would be a pretty fancy burritos. car wash. I suppose there's a lot of steam, you know, and uh, if you, <laughs> it could be, it could be done, but you know, I, I, that has happened. That's a good day when that happens, but it doesn't always happen. And, and sometimes a song comes about a little piece at a time, you know, like the Johnny Cash song over a decade. <laughs> I got the Fender and the hubcaps. Yeah. And, and, um, and that was the case with this one here. I, I wrote it, uh, meditating on, um, uh, the, the loss of my dad in late 2013 and um, and uh, being really taken with this new place, this new place to call home, you know. Um, so there it is, Morning Dove. Yeah, and um, like I said, so that's uh, one single, the, your most recent single from the album, and uh, you had three others prior to that. And this album, one of the things I love about it is it's so good on a lot of different levels. Um, I've been listening to it some just as I work or, you know, kind of in the background and it's perfect for that. Um, it's also really good to um, really get into it intentionally with the headphones and listen to the lyrics because there are a lot of good lyrics uh, involved yeah. in that song Thank you. Uh, or in that album. But tell me a little bit about sort of your overall sort of mindset and the themes that run through this album. Witterson's, which was back a, a couple of years ago, your last album was a little bit, I guess, more overt in sort of its social commentary. And this one seems a little bit less subdued, but yet there is a lot of, of commentary there. Just tell me a little bit about uh, the album as a, as a whole. Well, I, I I suppose I tend to pivot from you know from one record to the next um, in terms of what I want to talk about. You know, some records have been more uh, outward, I guess, in their observations. Um, as with Wittershins, the one before this year, that was written leading right up to the election, and uh, you know many of the songs written probably on the day of inauguration, <laughs> and as you can gather from the album. I wasn't too happy with things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not a fan. Uh, so, uh, you know, in that state of, uh, of anxiety and uh, curled up in a ball, um, wondering how we, we were going to get through all of this, um, I wrote a lot, of the, a lot of those songs in a real fever, you know. Um, now, 
uh, once I had that out of my system, and um, and you know, and I still play those songs live. They exist in the world. Um, I felt the need to go inward again, and um, and kind of um, you know do a gut check. What really matters, you know, when all of this blows over, you know, what are we left with? We're left with our own humanity and and uh, <laughs> the same old questions, you know. What am I doing here? You know, <laughs> and all of that other stuff. Hopefully, it will be a a, a much more uh, temporal concern, you know. Having said that, we, we've been fighting a lot of the same battles for a long time, and but it does feel like it's coming to a head uh, these days, you know. Yeah, and uh, uh, about that, obviously you've uh, been a little more introspective in this album, a little more outward in your, right. your previous album, but as just an artist in general, um, and I know you do a lot of kind of visual art as well. You do a lot of painting. And I know during the, the quarantine, you've picked up the pace on, on some of the paintings since you've been stuck at home a little bit. But just kind of what is the mindset right. of, a, uh, of an artist when it comes to sort of that concept of social commentary through their art? Right. Um, I feel like we, uh, we have arrived at this time in history. We've been given a microphone. All of us have. You know, whether you, um, you know, you ask for one or not, they give you one. <laughs> here's a microphone. Here's a, here's a telephone that has a microphone in it and a camera. And, uh, you know, don't do anything bad with it. But, uh, you know, <laughs> so we're all in that place. And, and uh, as a, a person who likes to write songs and make observations and express those things, I feel like... Um, it's uh it's part of uh it's part of the job you know um uh, it's beyond a job really you know to uh express those things that i see as being uh you know uh, an injustice um and so yeah i mean and also you're sort of uh you're brought into that conversation on social media as well you know that is the room that you enter typically now i suppose one can choose the room they enter you know um, <laughs> there's probably the fashion house version of, uh, you know, Facebook or wh whatever kind of universe you want to live in, you know, whatever kind of bubble you want to live in, um, you know, but, um, but yeah, those things inspire me to, uh, well, to, to offer my own two cents and I do so in the way of songs and in the way of tweets and whatever comes to mind. Um, I feel like if I don't, <laughs> if I don't write about, uh, you know, uh, all of the all of the little moments, which really aren't so little, you know, that uh, that memory of you know being a kid and being hauled off to church from the grandparents. If I don't sing about that stuff, then I'm not going to be able to sing about um, you know anything else, any any of the the big kind of collective stuff, you know. And if I don't sing about the big collective stuff, then I'm not going to be able to get to the truth of you know all of this other daily stuff. I, in, other, in other words, you can't block any of it. You've got to just let it kind of flow through, <laughs> you know. I don't think there would be a, a Gates of Eden if there weren't a Wiggle Wiggle. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> speaking, speaking of which, I've kind of got a Nashville Skyline thing going here on my, on my Zoom, don't I? Yeah, you definitely like that? do. <laughs> <laughs> you, definitely, you definitely do. Um, it's, a good look. it's a good look. <laughs> thank, uh, thank you. I, I always try to be shot from below. By a camera, mind you. <laughs> right, right. Yes, <laughs> ideally from a from a camera. Um, ideally. Well, let let me ask you th this question because you did um, you you mentioned your grandparents and being hauled off to church by your grandparents, and I, and I know that in your uh, kind of ancestry you've got some uh, indigenous ties. Um, yeah. I think Cherokee and, and Creek are the, the primary yeah. two. And, uh, and right. I know at least one set of grandparents have, as more the, the Creek side, and that's probably um, a little bit more of the culture that you're uh, familiar with. But kind of what, how does that indigenous ancestry sort of inform your worldview currently with, with everything that's happening? Oh, goodness. Well, um, how does it inform me? I think it, it, it informs me in ways that are hard to quantify, but I can say right off the bat that uh, knowing that, you know, um, I'm a descendant of those who 
who walked the Trail of Tears, you know, who somehow survived, uh, you know, the, the removal of tribes from this part of the country, <laughs> uh, you know, you know and, and led to uh, what is now Oklahoma. Um, what I take from that is that, you know, um, I'm a survivor. I come from survivors, and, and this is a, a strong spirit, you know. Um, there aren't as many of us, and even as many of us who are of mixed blood, you know, as there would have been 100 years ago. Um, um, you know, some, some of the, the full-blooded uh, Creek that I can remember growing up, my aunt, you know, she's no longer with us. And, um, but it was something that was really important to my grandmother to impress upon me and important to my mother to understand where we came from, you know, and I, and I try to impress that upon uh, my daughter, who's 12, um, you know. Um, we began, almost as soon as she was born, we began, we lived out in L.A., but there's quite a large uh, Native population in California, you know, um, and we would go off to powwows and just really try to take in as much uh, culture as, as we could, you know. And there are a lot of other programs now. Um, the Creek have been involved with uh, trying to uh, reclaim and preserve um, the Muscogee language. All of that kind of stuff is so meaningful, you know, because, um, you know, uh, we've been scattered to <laughs> every corner, you know, uh, but we've also brought a lot of, uh, we've made a contribution to every corner as well, and we have to remember that. You, you know, you're very uh, civic-minded, and um, and I do follow you on Twitter, so there, it's uh, some entertaining st stuff there, but, but just tell me a little bit about where you find yourself in this place and kind of what, you know, maybe organizations or our causes sort of uh, mean a lot to you right now at this point. Right. right. Oh, goodness. Well, you know, um, the ACLU um, comes to mind uh, off the top of my head. Um, I've been trying to keep up my, my, my good standing, my, <laughs> my membership with those guys. Uh, uh, they do so much, in term, especially in terms of uh, uh, fighting voter suppression, which is such a, a pressing issue right now, you know. I mean, a range of things, as you know. Um, Planned Parenthood, who provide all of these services from uh, n not only abortion, HIV treatment, and uh, uh, women's health, men's health, uh, birth control, uh, uh, so many things, you know. And um, the state of Tennessee has just been so brutal in terms of um, stripping away the access, you know, and the stripping away the rights <laughs> uh, of people to those you know, to have, to have that access, you know. And then, of course, late last night, the, um, the issue with uh, voting by mail um, being uh, struck down, you know. I'm going back to um, the ACLU there. Um, that's where we are today, you know, that, you know, the concern for COVID-19 is not enough of a concern to, uh, to warrant, you know, requesting an absentee ballot. That's preposterous. Right. Right. I think it is. You know, I, it's, uh, you know, voting shouldn't be a walk up the gallows. <laughs> you shouldn't have to take your life in your hands. You know, these are the kind of stories that we hear of places that we, uh, you know, we pretend to want to rescue. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt. I've, you know, seen those uh, comments about if uh, the U S saw another country doing what the U S is doing, we would invade them, you know? <laughs> yes. That's really concise and true. That's where we are sort of as a, as a culture right now. And, and speaking of, of COVID-19, uh, which obviously, uh, there's a, a ton of issues with that, both health wise and the economy for musicians. Uh, you guys Boy, are all at yeah. home. So tell me a little bit about, um, releasing an album when you're not able to tour so you're um that's a, a very different thing for you for the first time in your career to be able to to release an album without touring uh, but i do know that you're doing the sunday night stage it show so tell us a little bit about stage it and kind of maybe what a lifeline that might be for for you as a musician yeah i mean just uh just for the sake of feeling in contact, you know, I feel so good after I perform those stage at shows. Every Sunday, um, 9 o'clock uh, Central, um, 10 Eastern, obviously, 
seven Pacific, Hawaii, you're on your own. You figure it out. <laughs> you want to live there. So <laughs> yeah, I, I never know what time it is in, in Hawaii. So you know, they, they don't they'll, even they'll do it. watch it. They're good clocks. to figure it out. Yeah, they're good at figuring that out by now. They're on island time, right? That's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it just feels so good to have that connection. And a lot of the people that come every Sunday, uh, you know, I've, I've been seeing them over the course of these last weeks. And it's, it's really nice that way, you know. It's like our, our version of the Cheers bar, you know. Um, I don't know if that makes me Ted Danson. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, but I love it. I love it, you know, and uh, and uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's a very small fee to get in. Uh, the way that Stage It has it set up, they have a system of notes. They call it notes. Winds up being about five bucks to get in the door, um, and then from from there, it's uh, you know, t- pay pay as you as you wish in the form of tips, which are also in the form of notes. It's all very confusing, um, but not so confusing really, um, just for me. <laughs> but uh, that generosity has helped me make it through, uh, you know, through this through this time as well. It's it's made a, a nice contribution and kept me kept me going. I think, uh, and just the feeling that 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 uh, so many people are on board and supporting musicians. It's a good feeling, you know, because it feels like <laughs> the bigger system, you know, uh, the the way things are, are accounted. That's really a, a tough one to, to to understand and to swallow, you know. And now we can't tour. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's definitely uh, tough. And I know releasing an album without uh, being able to, to tour, certainly, since that's where you guys typically make the money is from touring and not album sales. So I would certainly encourage everyone to, um, first of all, I'm not even sure if we, we've been talking about the album, but I'm not 100% sure if we've actually mentioned the name of it. But the name of it is oh. Lightning, Show Us Your Stuff. It yeah. comes out September 4th on Yep Rock Records. And let me see if there's anything else in there. So September 4th, Lightning, Show Us Your Stuff, Yep Rock Records. Please buy it if you can. If you have to yeah. stream it, then that's okay. But if you can buy it, that's the ideal. And uh, it's and there I'm, amongst uh, the racks behind you. Yeah, it's yeah. It's somewhere right. yeah, in there, Tim. I'll just reach back and pick it up. So, And you will have it in vinyl <laughs> as well, right? So it's. I it's will coming. have it in vinyl. And if you act now, here, mm-hmm. I'm going to do my pitch. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you must act now. Uh, yeah, the, the, the LP, which everyone loves LPs these days. Yes. Uh, it, you pick it up now, inside there, there's another 45 in its own sleeve with a painting that I, that I did myself. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And uh, red vinyl, nice oh. red vinyl, you know, and uh, and those are two other songs that aren't on the album. So you get a nice package and um, there's a shirt and a beautiful poster. Um, right. so, and all of that is available to the Yuck Rock store. Right. But yeah, support your, your local record stores as well. Yeah, They need help as well. They're part of this. We're in this together, all of us, you know, right. however you get your music. But man, support those local record stores. Yeah, it's all interconnected, and so we certainly encourage everyone um, to yeah buy buy the records, buy the music, support the the musicians in general, your local musicians if if you have a chance uh, to support someone locally because uh, there's a lot of folks struggling right now, and so yeah, definitely wanted to to go in and, and mention the album Lightning, show us your stuff. Uh, which is just about to come out. And I know you've got a, a brief story about your, your daughter kind of is responsible for the name of that album. So um, before, <laughs> That's before right. we yeah. move to a song, I was gonna, just going to get you to tell us a little bit about the, the dramatic scene of your, your, your daughter um, making that pronouncement. Right. Um, she was five. So this is, this is going back a few years. Um, and we were out back. Sun was going down. And uh, so we had all kinds of boxes out there in the driveway and we were getting packed and moved to Nashville. And um, I look over and she's got this long stick of manzanita and uh, she raises it to the sky and she says, come on, lightning, show us your stuff. And uh, (laughs) the next thing I know, I hear the thunder crack and the sky is blue. And I say to my wife, I think she has some kind of powers. She's, you know, some kind of power. We might not want to mess with her. <laughs> Be gingerly when uh, when you when you set her off to bed. Uh, so we got her in the house, and uh, that was the strangest thing. But you know, 
I don't know. Uh, I still can't, you know, I can't explain any of it, but, uh, but I filed that away, that, uh, that memory and, and that phrase. I think of, um, I think of that when, um, I'm setting out to make a record, you know, I'm asking for inspiration to strike, you know, I don't want to be struck down, but, um, but you know, all of us are sort of out there like Ben Franklin with our, with our kites and our keys and our, you know, out there in the storm. <laughs> hoping for something to light up the sky and amaze us and, uh, you know, um, remind us that we're in awe of something bigger. And um, so that seemed to fit, you know, this album. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. thanks for uh, sharing that story. Um, again, the, the story comes as the name of the album, which is Lightning, Show Us Your Stuff. Uh, and Lightning is out September 4th, Yep Rock Records. Um, please buy it. And I, I know that you are, uh, are planning to sing a song for us. And like I said, I know you've got four singles out and I believe you're gonna perform Morning Dove, which is your fourth and current uh, single. And, uh, and right. tell us a little bit about the song and then go ahead and, and jump in and play. My well, goodness, uh, yeah, this, was, this is a song that uh, I took a little time to write. Um, I think most of it was written good chunk of it in 2013, 2014, but every now and then I would come up with another verse and I'd say, well, maybe that's the one, maybe that's the one. And then I kind of wound up going back to um, what I had originally written. Um, funny how that is sometimes. Um, it was complete and, and yet it didn't really fit on Wittershins too much, you know? That happens sometimes. I wind up writing all these songs and I realize, well, this one goes in this stack and this one belongs over here more, you know? And that's how I focus on the thematic, you know, uh, part of putting the record together. Um, so uh, it's something I've, I've talked with other songwriters. It, it seems to be a very common task. Uh, Kevin Gordon does the same thing too. <laughs> yeah, so I admire Kevin, so it must, it must be good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so uh, so that's what happened there, and um, I went out and recorded it in November, uh, last November with Jay Bellrose, fantastic drummer who I think you you may know, um, played you know with everyone from you know Robert Plant, Allison Krauss, Ray LaMontagne, Joe Henry, on and on and on, Sam Phillips, um, as well as his wife Jennifer Condos, great bass player, and Eric Haywood, who you know from Jayhawks and Sunvolt. So it's a good bunch. Yeah. Yeah, and. Um... And so this is the, again, the current single. So the, the fourth single off of the, the album coming up. And uh, again, the, top, the name of the song is Morning Dove. One, two. Empty-handed, you enter. Empty-handed, you leave. On the long walk, temptation gleams like silver coins on money trees. Open-hearted, you enter. Stepped to be dazzled by fortune, the things we chase that can't be kept. One day I'm gonna lay my head in the long cool shadow of the dogwood, leap back and let the cotton clouds go by. White blossom of the mountain laurel. And the wild flowers of the smoke bush No weeping when the morning dove arrives On the highway there's suffering On the highway there's loss Many toes on the road that turns Great miles to cross Day I'm gonna lay my head in the long cool shadow of the dogwood Lay back and let the cotton clouds go by White blossom of the mountain laurel 
And the wild flowers in the smoke bush No even when the morning dove rise No even when the morning dove Shadow of the dogwood Lay back and let the cotton clouds go by White blossom of the mountain laurel And the wild flowers in the smoke bush No even when the morning dove arrives No even when the morning dove arrives No even when the morning dove Yep rock, uh, yep, rock recording star and all around nice guy, Grant Lee Phillips, uh, <laughs> with, uh, with that acoustic uh, solo rendition of, of Morning Dove, which is one of the 10 songs on the new album, Lightning, coming up September 4th. So, uh, so Grant Lee Phillips, thank you so Ooh. much for, uh, for joining me and talking a little bit about your music and, and what's going on in this crazy world around us. I definitely appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Take care, my friend. See you around. All right. Thanks. Gather up your children. The earth is real. The seas are bound to swell. The ground it trembles underneath your feet Wake into the one and bed Gather up children, don't you wait till morning The night can get a sand 